Have you ever thought that modern humans are not the only human species that ever existed? Millions of years ago, Earth was the stage for eight distinct human species. Each was a strange puzzle piece of evolution, a divergent branch carrying its own story and its own mystery. Neanderthals, muscular warriors who once ruled Europe, Denisovans, the shadow people, who left behind superior genes we still don't fully understand. Erectus, the first pioneers to cross the seas. Naledi, small beings who lived in the dark and knew how to bury their dead. Heidelbergensis, the spear-bearing ancestors. Floresiensis, the mysterious hobbit-sized dwarfs. Luzonensis, silent traces from the Philippines. And then, one by one, they vanished. Only we remain, Homo sapiens, the skinniest, weakest, and least likely to survive. But why? What allowed us to survive while our seven human siblings faded into the shadows? Were we smarter or more ruthless? In genes, in caves, in fossils, the clues are still there. This isn't just history. This is an unsolved mystery. Let's embark on a journey to uncover our lost siblings and reveal the real reason. Why are we the only ones left? Before we begin the journey, there's something worth contemplating. The definition of species isn't as simple as we may think. In modern biology, there are over 20 different ways to define this concept, and they don't always agree. Some ancient human species could even fall in love and have children like the romance between Neanderthals and our ancestors. No hypotheses needed, no legends required. The evidence still flows in our blood, even today. Homo erectus, the pioneers, 2,100,000 years ago. With a brain only two-thirds the size of ours, but a heart as vast as the ocean, Homo erectus dared to do what no other species had ever done before, leave Africa to explore the world. They walked barefoot, carrying fire and stone tools. They crossed deserts, traversed jungles, even sailed across seas to set foot on lands no human had ever touched. From South Africa to Java, from China to Georgia, their footprints spanned three continents. For nearly two million years, they dominated the planet. But evolution never stops. Homo erectus couldn't keep up with the pace of the newer species. When Homo sapiens and Neanderthals developed complex language, sophisticated hunting tactics, and tight-knit social structures, erectus was gradually pushed out of fertile lands. They couldn't compete with large-scale cooperation and boundless creativity of these newcomers. Eventually, they were confined to remote islands like Java before vanishing completely. The era of the pioneers had come to an end. Homo heidelbergensis, warriors of the ice, 600,000, 200,000 years ago. Frozen Europe demanded resilient warriors. Heidelbergensis were those outstanding hunters, able to coordinate like an army, throwing spears with precision from afar. Heidelbergensis didn't truly disappear. Instead, they evolved into two different branches. They not only survived, but thrived, becoming a crucial evolutionary bridge. In Europe, they adapted to the cold climate and evolved into Neanderthals, with large bodies and exceptional cold endurance. In Africa, other Heidelbergensis groups continued evolving, eventually becoming Homo sapiens, with larger brains and superior abstract thinking. So, they didn't exactly go extinct, they transformed into new lineages. Homo neanderthalensis, spirits of the ice, 400,000, 40,000 years ago. This might be the most tragic story of all. Forget the crude caveman stereotype that Hollywood paints. Neanderthals were strong, intelligent, and physically adapted to Europe's icy grip. They didn't just make fire, they painted cave art, buried their dead with ritual, even wore shell jewelry. For 300,000 years, five times longer than Homo sapiens have existed, they ruled Europe and Western Asia. 
When Homo sapiens arrived in Europe around 45,000 years ago, an uneven competition began. Not because sapiens were individually smarter, but because they could collaborate on a large scale through complex language and shared culture. While Neanderthals lived in small groups of 20 to 30, sapiens could form networks of hundreds, even thousands. When the harshest ice age struck Europe, Neanderthals couldn't match the flexibility and resource sharing skills of sapiens. They were gradually pushed into barren lands. Their population declined. There was no final battle, no bloodshed, just a quiet fading, like snow melting in the palm of your hand. Homo floresiensis, the legendary little people, 190,000, 50,000 years ago. On the remote island of Flores, where natural laws seem reversed, elephants shrank into dwarfs and dragons grew enormous. Humans, too, were miniaturized into marvelous beings. Homo floresiensis stood just over a meter tall, with a brain the size of a grapefruit. Yet their intelligence was astonishing. They crafted sophisticated tools, mastered fire, hunted tiny elephants, and bravely confronted giant Komodo dragons. Amazingly, they survived until about 50,000 years ago, tens of thousands of years after the Neanderthals had disappeared. And then, one day, they too vanished without a trace. Islanders today still whisper of the Ebu Gogo, but behind that legend lies a real ecological tragedy. Around 50,000 years ago, Mount Liangbua erupted violently. Toxic ash blanketed the entire island, killing plants and animals, and stripping Floresiensis of their only lifeline. They weren't defeated in war. They weren't wiped out by stronger foes. They fell to the wrath of the earth itself and disappeared in silence, like ghosts whose names were never spoken. Homo Luzonensis, the mystery from the Philippines, 67,000 years ago. In 2019, the scientific world was shaken by the discovery of Homo Luzonensis in the Philippines. They were as small as Floresiensis, but even stranger, with ape-like curved fingers, unusual canine teeth, and a jaw bearing features of ancient ancestors. The biggest question, how did they get to this isolated island? on primitive rafts, washed ashore by luck? Or did they belong to a mysterious evolutionary branch we have yet to understand? Luzonensis were likely victims of geographic isolation and severe climate change. During ice ages, low sea levels connected the Philippines to the mainland. But when the ice melted, they were trapped on islands with limited resources. Luzonensis may have survived on small animals and sparse vegetation. When the climate shifted dramatically around 60,000 years ago, the food chain collapsed. And with a population too small to maintain genetic diversity, they gradually weakened and disappeared, leaving no tools, no graves, no signs of daily life. Only bone fragments in caves remained to tell their story. They were like phantoms, appearing, then vanishing, leaving behind countless unanswered questions. Homo naledi, Spirits in the dark, 300,000 years ago. Deep within the winding caves of South Africa, we found something unbelievable. Homo naledi had a brain only one-third the size of ours and a body more ape-like than human. Yet they deliberately buried their dead. No fire, no elaborate rituals, only silence and death carefully placed in darkness. This challenges everything we know about consciousness and spirituality. Maybe to have a soul, a brain doesn't need to be big. Maybe love finds a way, even in the deepest dark. As the outside world surged forward in tools and social organization, Naledi were left behind. They may have been trapped by their very habitat. They seem to have existed solely within the rising star cave system, safe but extremely limited. When droughts came around 200,000 pounds 300,000 years ago, underground water dried up, vegetation vanished, and the caves were no longer a haven. Perhaps they died in the very caves they once considered sacred resting places, becoming the last fossils of their own kind. 
Yet even as time erased their name, they left behind something no other species ever had before. Through their quiet acts in the dark, they showed that humans knew how to love from the very, very beginning. Homo Denisova, the Great Phantoms, 300,000 years ago. This is perhaps the strangest story of them all. We have never seen their faces, never found a home they lived in. Only a single finger bone in a Siberian cave, a tooth from a child who died alone. And yet from these fragments, DNA has whispered a magnificent tale. The Denisovans weren't confined to a single place. They ranged across Asia, from icy Siberia to tropical Southeast Asia. Their DNA carried supernatural gifts, such as the ability to breathe at altitudes that modern lungs cannot endure. Denisovans may be the only human species that didn't truly go extinct, but rather merged into the flow of evolution. When Homo sapiens spread across Asia from about 70,000 years ago, instead of resisting, like some Neanderthal groups, the Denisovans chose to integrate. They interbred with sapiens, passing on valuable genetic advantages, especially traits that help survive at high altitudes and cold climates. Over time, with their small and scattered population, the pure Denisovans faded, but their genetic legacy lives on in the peoples of Asia, Melanesia, and indigenous Australians. They didn't die. They became part of us, silent but immortal. Homo sapiens, the last human compared to other human species. Homo sapiens are physically rather fragile, but we possessed something no species before us ever had. The ability to think abstractly, to communicate ideas, and to pass those ideas forward into the future. We weren't limited by geography or climate. From jungle to desert, from polar regions to islands, sapiens could survive, not through genetic mutation or revolutionary evolution, but through adaptability. We were the first human species to transcend geographic boundaries without needing to change our genes. When the rest of the Homo genus stopped, sapiens kept moving forward and survived. The secret of survival. So in this brutal race for survival, why is it that only we, Homo sapiens, crossed the finish line? We were not stronger than the Neanderthals. We didn't have superpowers like the Denisovans. We weren't as persistent as the Erectus. So what was our winning secret? While other species adapted to specific environments, we learned to adapt to change itself. When the ice melted, we invented agriculture. When old tools no longer worked, we created new ones. When faced with hardship, we didn't just survive. We collaborated to solve even greater problems. We didn't win with weapons, but with strategy, creativity, and intellect. We are the last ones left in evolution's marathon. While every other competitor has fallen by the wayside, we keep running from caves to cities, from stone tools to spaceships. But those eight lost human species, are they truly gone? In every drop of blood flowing through our veins lies their story. Every journey we undertake bears the pioneering spirit of Erectus. Every piece of art we create carries the soul of Neanderthals. They live in our DNA, in our dreams and ambitions, in every step we take toward human progress. We are not merely Homo sapiens. We are the sum of all who came before us. We are the fire they lit and passed down through thousands of generations. We are the voices they never got to speak. Our responsibility is not just to survive, but to understand where we came from and never turn our backs on that truth. The eight human species that once lived are not just archeological facts. They are genetic architecture, behavior, and evolutionary memory still embedded within us today. Forgetting doesn't come from time. It comes from indifference. They are not just bones or fossils in museums. They still exist in our blood, in how we think, and in how we exist. 